Hey everybody, it's Jim here, and today's video is a sponsored video. I don't do these all that often. However, today, I thought I could do some good with this. We're going to be going over a three-quarter size beginner acoustic electric guitar by a company called Von Goa, who was kind enough to send me it for free to give a video review on. I'm also going to be giving you information later on in the video on how one of you that watches this video will have the opportunity, or the chance rather, to have one sent to you completely free. Free. But before we get started, I just want to say a quick thanks to all of you for your support on this channel, liking the videos, commenting, and also subscribing to the channel. Those are some of the main reasons why I'm even presented with these opportunities to begin with. And again, thank you to Van Goa for providing the guitar. To start things off here, I had previously filmed an unboxing where I'm going to show you everything that this guitar came with. I'm going to do a quick sound demonstration with the guitar as it was out of the box and then we're going to put it onto the bench because there's some really important things when it comes to beginner guitars and playability goes that we're going to check out. After that, I'll give you my final thoughts and my other reason that I decided to take them up on this offer. So let's get started. All right, I'm just gonna unbox this thing and let's see what it comes with. A manual, a capo, a cloth to clean it, a tuner, a cable, I'm running out of hand space here, strap, jeez, another set of strings, what are these? 11 gauge. Picks. Yep. And an optional pick guard. Let me go ahead and throw all this back in here for a second. I think it's cool that it comes with all that stuff. The only thing I guess you could say, if you were a true beginner that you would be missing, would be some sort of stand. But, it does come with a case, which we're going to check out in a second. Well, a gig bag. So the gig bag... It's kind of funny. I actually think it's a little bit better than the one that the Japanese fenders come with. Oh, it definitely is. You get a little insert here. This isn't super high quality like what you would get in a mono or a sir or something like that gig bag, but it's definitely more than what I was expecting. And again, that's a nice touch. And this is it. It actually has electronics built into it, which I guess it would have made sense considering it came with a cable. Uh, action looks a little high, but I'm gonna tune this thing up. Well, let's give it a shot. <laughs> So again, the brand that makes this guitar is Van Goa. This is the three quarter size beginner acoustic in a natural finish. This has a spruce top on it. It has a laminated and solid wood combination for the body itself material. The back material is Sapelli 
and as well as the neck itself is also Sapelli. The fretboard is scientific wood as they label it, basically just a composite. Now one thing I was not expecting after seeing the Amazon listing for this guitar was the onboard electronics, which was a very nice thing to have. And they actually function perfectly fine out of the box. You get a built-in tuner and an EQ. So if you wanted to plug this thing in to either a PA or a little amp, you'd be all good to go. Finishing out here, we do have an actual bone nut. We're not sure if this is actually glued in or not. We will not know until we do a full teardown of this guitar and a reset up but it's nice that they actually put in a non-synthetic nut here. I like that a lot. And the tuners themselves are 18 to one gauge. I've played with them a little bit and they actually feel pretty solid right along what you would expect from uh, Fender Mexico, for example, on their electric guitars. Now, one of the most important things on any beginner guitar, whether it is acoustic or electric, is the action and the string heights. It can really make or break the playing experience for the new student and if they're too high, it could kind of demotivate them from playing because you have to push extra hard onto the actual strings to get them to make the correct notes. Whereas if they're too low, you're going to have massive buzzing issues. So you kind of have to get in between here. What we're going to do right quick, we're going to measure the heights at the first fret and then at the 12th fret. And then we're going to take my Gibson dub, put it on the workbench because that guitar plays extremely well action wise. And we're going to compare just how different the two heights are. The E string on the first fret here is measuring out at just under three millimeters. And that is also the case for the other E string. At the 12th fret, it's four millimeters. However, on the bigger E string, it is a little bit closer to five millimeters. All right, now we're gonna measure the Gibson real quick. At the first fret, two millimeters on the E, and two millimeters on the other E. Let's go to the 12th. And now at the 12th fret, it's just about two and three quarters millimeters on both strings. So the action's a little bit lower on the Gibson. So unsurprisingly, the Gibson Dove that has had a professional setup is a little bit more playable with lower action than this Van Gogh was out of the box. However, I can tell you that if the truss rod on this guitar does work, we can actually improve the action by a little bit from adjusting the truss rod. And what we're gonna do right now is verify that it does in fact work because sometimes that's not the case. There we go. Now, one important thing when it comes to adjusting your guitar's truss rod, whether you're a beginner or somebody that's been playing for a long time, this is not something that you should be afraid of adjusting. But once you start to feel real resistance, stop because you could break the truss rod. However, I'm happy to report on this guitar, it does function and you should always go quarter turns at a time like what we just did. Now I review a lot of guitars on this channel. However, I'm going to approach this one from a different perspective as if this is the person very first guitar that they're ever going to play. There are a few key non-negotiable things that go into a good quality first instrument in my book. The first being, is it comfortable to play? Does it stay in tune reliably well? And does it sound at least decent enough that you're going to be inspired to continue to want to learn and practice and play? Starting off with the playability, once you're in this position, these open positions, which is where the foundations of all of your guitar playing is going to begin more often than not, no problems whatsoever out of the box. The action is absolutely low enough. There's no string buzz or anything like that. And it's comfortable, no problems. The tuning of this guitar is again, pretty decent. Are these tuners as good as the ones in the high-end Japanese guitars behind me? Absolutely not, but they absolutely serve the purpose very well. I also appreciate that this built-in tuner it's sufficient. It does a really good job. I was not expecting this guitar to have this as the photos that I was sent did not show any electrical components whatsoever being built into this, but I thought that was a nice touch. And finally, in regards to how this guitar sounds, I think it sounds pretty good. Could it benefit from a nicer set of strings on it? Absolutely. And that's something that we're going to do in a different follow-up video with this guitar because there's one other thing that I wish was a little bit different on this. When we had this on the bench, 
back to back with the Gibson. I measured the string heights at the first fret and at the 12th fret. At the first fret, as I stated earlier in the segment, I thought it was perfectly fine. Once I started to move up though, once I got to around the seventh fret, I really started to notice the difference. And that playability can be a deal breaker for some people. For me, I've played guitar for so many years, I can get used to it pretty quick. But ideally, I would like this to come with a little bit lower action. I do appreciate that the truss rod does work on this and I did have it some time to let it settle in because it's not always instantaneous, the results, but we're gonna have to lower the action a little bit more to get it to a place where I would feel 100% confident and comfortable with giving it to somebody and saying, off to the races with you. You can't blame anything other than yourself if you can't get better and improve with this instrument. So what I'm going to do with this guitar in a second video, we are actually going to disassemble it. We're going to sand down this bridge ever so slightly to try and get the same exact action that we have on the Gibson. I'm gonna be showing you how I do that. And if you have a guitar, whether it's a uh, Van Gogh or not, you could do the same techniques with that and it could greatly improve your playing experience. As far as other critiques of this guitar go, outside of the fact that the action is a little bit high for my taste once you start getting to the seventh fret and above on the guitar, the fret edges, aren't the smoothest in the whole world. They're not gonna cut your hands when you're playing. And when you're playing acoustic guitar, especially when you're starting off as a beginner, you're not gonna be doing a whole ton of that. So I don't think that's a huge deal breaker and they're not nearly as sharp as some other beginner instruments that I have played in the past, but it's worth noting you're not getting anything that's buttery smooth, nor should you really expect it at that price point. The other thing is this came with a clip-on tuner. That's a nice touch if the tuner had a battery in it. There's no battery supplied. So thankfully this does have the onboard electronics, which did have a battery in it when I did get it. So it worked straight away. But for a beginner, it's absolutely vital that they have a way to tune the instrument. And the fact that Van Gogh went and they provided all these extra accessories to be able to get started, to be able to get on the path to learning how to play guitar, keep the thing in tune. It was a nice touch. I just wish the clip on tuner did have a battery on it. So we could have made use or tested that to begin with. So overall, for just over a hundred bucks, pretty cool. Not bad whatsoever. Now I'm gonna level with you guys here. I did mention one of the reasons why I did accept this offer to work with Van Gogh the Guitars. The second one is because my kids school, I got a letter, they started about a month ago and they're starting a guitar club for kids put this on the bench as I stated earlier in a future video and then we're gonna donate this guitar after I get this thing playing in tip-top shape and then we'll do a follow-up full-on playthrough kind of review because I wanted this more to be about the feel of the guitar and what you get inside of the box and we'll see how it does from there after all that work is done now on to you I did say one person, Van Gogh, was kind enough to agree to send one of these guitars to you. How do you do that? Won't cost you anything. All you have to do is click on the link below and follow the new Twitch channel where we're gonna be live streaming musical performances, live gear unboxings and playthroughs. That's gonna be all interactive and stuff that I can't wait to get going. Podcasts, live guests, all sorts of stuff going on to the future. The drawing will be a week from the day that this video goes live on a Friday and the winner will be notified. You have three days to get back to me and we'll get you that guitar and in touch with Van Gogh who will ship it directly to you so I don't have to do any of that. Thank you for watching this video. Thank you to Van Gogh for providing me with this instrument because it's going to go to a very, very good cause to a local child in this community. And who knows, maybe this is an upstart for their musical journey. Comment, like, subscribe, and I will see you on the next video. Take it easy, everybody.